Hey y'all, so today I want to talk a bit about Berserk and we're going to be looking at some of um, some videos on Berserk as well. Just some thoughts I've been having, you know, um, when I look at Berserk and I look at my own life, when I look at the entirety of Africa. In the world of Berserk, for those who don't know, but you ought to know by now, like seriously, uh, Berserk is a manga created by Kentaro Miura and it's about a guy who wants to have revenge on his best friend who sacrificed him and uh, a group of his mercenary friends to a bunch of demons. And so after the sacrifice, I don't want to go too much into the story. If you don't know it, you don't know it. Go find out. After the sacrifice, basically in the Eclipse episode, Guts and his uh, girlfriend were given the uh, sacrifice brand and their fate was sealed. So from that very moment when they were sealed with that brand on their flesh it was determined that these people were now will now be damned not only to hell but will definitely have a gruesome death they will be devoured by demons um, as they pass on or to pass on and so i'm trying to look at this in my context of being stuck in the jungles of africa and in africa it has been determined that all who are born here will suffer and die for nothing. Now, it depends on your belief system, of course, uh, because everybody does have free will. Everybody does have free will. Most people who are born in the jungle, they exercise their free will in a means to try and escape the jungle and try to reach a golden a uh, wonderful city from a different country particularly the west right and yeah this is this is artwork from berserk it's insane uh crazy architecture uh the guy was a genius yes he had help but still this is this is amazing and i am showing you this because this is this is usually this is usually the norm and the, the one decision people always make for themselves that if I'm going to make any decision in a world where it has determined that staying here I will die a miserable death, I will choose to try and run to come here into this golden city. But another reason I like Berserk so much is that it explores many themes. Um, a lot of religions put in one and it's executed like really really uh wonderfully and the key thing with berserk's like final arc is that it focuses on the biblical ending of the world such as uh the antichrist taking over and people or you know being won over by him because he's so charismatic and everything and that is griffith uh griffith the guy who sacrificed guts and so what i like with this current arc is that it's following the end times pattern that the antichrist is going to win over the public the public are going to flock to the antichrist's beast system right he's going to promise everybody after this orchestrated economic collapse that hey just get on this digital stuff bro things are going to be all right and then when he's got you locked in there it's all over you're going to be sacrificed in order to open a portal to hell uh that is being developed right now in Switzerland uh, by CERN. I've spoken on that uh, many, well, once before. So you can check out CERN for yourself. Um, and so this is what people don't understand, that the sheer desperation of being stuck in the jungle, yeah, I get it. It's horrible. I, heck, I want to leave. But I know that coming here is a definite it's another death sentence. It's just you don't see it. You only see it when the gates are shut. That, oh no, uh, you're about to be sacrificed in order to open that portal to hell. And that is pretty much the final theme of Berserk's story. Uh, that the people living in this city, all of them will be sacrificed in order to bring the God Hand, the other four demons, uh, to the earth. Right? And so, now going back to determinism and free will, and looking at my life here, is that, okay bro, so... You being born here, despite being born in a slightly used to be well off family, um, it was determined that regardless being well off, you will die a miserable death here. 
you had the option 10 years, 15 years ago to leave, but you chose not to because you didn't realize that you were living in a jungle or they lied to you or you were just ignorant. It's all, it's your fault. So it has been determined that you're going to die a miserable death if you stay here. And yes, from the looks of it, that's exactly what's happening. But I still have some form of free will to exercise here that, okay, are you going to try and leave? And my question would be, if I leave, what the place I'll go to is here. Where they, even if it is Japan, where I can be here and exercise my uh, self actualization to its highest degree, right, for a short time, and then I'd be sacrificed. Because we saw this little scenario during the so-called pandemic, correct? Where people who did manage to escape were now forced to take some potion and uh, if you didn't take it, you'll be deported. And a lot of people who took the potion, well, they're not here now anymore, such as my friend's aunt, my aunt, and uh, a bunch of other people that I know, right? So that's the thing. What's stopping the world rulers from executing another scenario like that where you got to take a potion, right, to stay in the country you're in? or you deported, or you're thrown in prison because you could be a carrier of who knows what sort of fake sicknesses that they might uh, make up. So, again, looking at me here now, is that you're an artist. In order for you to live your full potential and to self experience self actualization to the highest degree, you're going to have to come here. But the costs of coming here, even if you could make it, right, is that it won't be for long, but then I don't actually know if it's going to be 5 years, 10 years, 50 years, I don't know either. And some might say, dude, you're too afraid. You don't know if they're going to close the gate in 5 years, 2 years, or 50 years. So why not just take a chance? Why not just go there and have the best time of your life? Well, I'm somebody who hates regrets. Uh, I hate it. Because right now, despite the garbage that I'm in, it's in an environment that I know. I cannot control the environment, but I know the environment. So when things go off, I know where to run to. Unlike a place that I am not familiar with, if things go off, it's all over. And then of course, you wanna regret doing this. Now, let's hear what this guy has to say about determinism and free will with characters such as uh, Guts and other um, tragic heroes. Strugglers, doomers, characters who constantly fight their own fate in a battle that can't possibly win. In a world of determinism, these characters were quite literally born to die. And with their fate being sealed, they act accordingly, with their unrelenting determination or their pursuit of revenge and violence. Either way, it's them perpetuating the same cycle over and over because they believe in their own free will and not the fate that is determined for them. This is a concept that's often debated in our own reality, if we even have free will, or if everything's determined for us at birth. There's different factors that can determine our fate, like our genes, memories from the past, or previous cycles that were decided beforehand. Either way, the theory is that we can't control it, and no matter how life plays out, it's definite. There's various characters in fiction that are in direct... Right, so you heard his little introduction there, that... A lot of characters like Guts are just born to die. And coming back to the main concept that I'm trying to talk about today is that those born in Africa, you meant to die a miserable death. You meant to you literally you're born to like scrape, bruh. You're born to like lick the floor until the day you die. That's what it feels like. It doesn't even matter that you might be driving a Rolls Royce. You do not you do not have that feeling of accomplishment in your heart. You do not have that freedom of expression that you wish you do or wish you had. I know those who are stuck in the jungle experience this. And you do not or you are not able to talk about this exact feeling because you will be judged by your peers. They'll say what you're talking about, nigga, nigga, you crazy, nigga, you weird, nigga, that's dumb, yada, yada, yada. You cannot show your intelligence in the jungle. 
you, you, you're not allowed to because you'll be dragged out of the tribe and made an example out of. People will say, you think you're better than us, boy? Just because you can think or you can calculate or you can yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. In other words, your potential here has been determined that it, it will never, 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 ever be explored because the environment is just so hostile to those who wish to develop further. Now, as an artist, it's actually a miracle that I did come this far and I did manage to create um, a few manga and that I finished a complete manga, um, Bloody Hell Volume 1, with eight chapters. It's actually a miracle. But I now know that I was capable, I am still capable of creating hundreds of works, hundreds that if I was in a different environment, I would have been able to create like who knows how many. My potential is hindered here. And now this is not a video to complain of like how sad it is to be here and whatnot because we know that uh, the golden city of everywhere else is the melting pot for a grand sacrifice. It's just people are so occupied by the pleasures over there they can't see that they are being fattened up for the great sacrifice to come. Now, here in Africa, however, there's a sacrifice each day happening. Each day somebody dying because somebody literally sacrificed somebody. Somebody dying because somebody couldn't control their temper. or Somebody took their own life because they couldn't handle the misery of this place. And so Africa's world, the landscape, not the landscape, but... If you look at it from a, uh, a creative point of view as to like the world of Africa is pretty much as hostile as berserk that Africa's demons are a lot of the people and yes there are real demons as well whom the people consult um, and so on and so on but you get what I'm trying to say so a lot of berserk just fits so well in the in in Africa because here as this guy mentioned that some of these tragic heroes deny deny the fact that they have been determined to lick the floor until they die and they want to exercise free will even though it's going to perpetuate the cycle of uh, misery hatred bigotry uh, murder and so on in that environment because if you're born to lick the floor and suffer and die, but you have a choice that if you're born with strength, uh, more strength than somebody else, more brains than somebody else, you have the choice to exploit somebody else. You have the choice to make somebody else lick the floor, right? Because you will say, there's no way I'm licking the floor uh, until the day I die. What will be my reward for doing that? And so you choose to defy fate, or you try to, but ultimately you're saying, if I'm going down, it's either I'm going to take somebody with me, a bunch of people with me, or I'm going to try to have fun while I go down. And that is pretty much the, the mindset of this place. This is the mindset of Africa. Everybody knows that you're doomed. Oh, snap, I was born here. It's over. Like, day one, it's over. If you don't know it yet, you will. And so those who saw that, nah, I don't want to die here, they come over here. They come over here. Those with brains tried to do their best to be part of the golden city. They do as the Romans do, right? But in the end, they too will be sacrificed. Now it makes you wonder, as to like, okay, dude, if you're saying Africa is a hellhole and then the golden city, which is the West, uh, or Japan is a, a huge melting pot for a grand sacrifice to all these things. Is there any place that is good? Well, uh, no. Everybody's got problems, right? Now the question is, well, if there's going to be a grand or you might be asking, do you actually believe that there is going to be a real grand sacrifice to open a literal portal to hell? And I said, well, go look at what CERN is trying to do. You know, and anybody's going to call me a conspiracy theorist in this day and age, it's like, y'all are kidding, right? 
Like, like we're not even talking to you. We're talking to those who have eyes to see. We're talking to those who see patterns in this reality and who can assess berserk and notice that, you know what? There's a lot of stuff here that's based on reality. And then you try to construct, right? Uh, uh, um, uh, an image in your head, not an image in your head, but it means to understand the world better. And then you realize that, man, I think this guy is on to something here. Because for those who think that, oh no, it's just fantasy, it's just for fun, do you guys really think a human being is capable of creating something from scratch? Like literally make up something? You can't make up anything. Every story I ever told is based on something I ripped off. And that goes for everybody else, right? If I were to tell a story that you don't know of, best believe I either ripped it off from it, another story you never heard of, or I ripped it off from my own life experience. Point is, everything is based on reality. Dragon Ball Z is based on reality. A different reality that was around four or five thousand years ago before the world got flooded right we know that goku is based on the monkey god hanuman right do you think somebody could just make that up you can't make that up hanuman must have been based on something hercules and all these guys right the greek so-called gods and so on those were real things before the flood Right? Because a human being just can't make anything up. It's not possible. Everything is borrowed from reality. And then you try to create a moral story out of what you borrowed. That's just how it works. You have to uh, exchange. Everything's got to do with exchange. Full Metal Alchemist. Equivalent exchange. Right? That's just how it works. So let's quickly hear this one part from this guy who talks about but um, Guts is uh, psychology. Clips where it was shown that he was perfectly capable of being contemplative and even having a chivalrous personality at times. This duality between struggling to keep his sanity or falling into the abyss and becoming a monster is written in a way that has never been done to this extent before in the f Exactly. And that's why I like Berserk so much. A lot of you guys, everybody's been through a lot of stuff. Um, but hey, uh, there are people who've been through worse. I mean, y'all even know that. Uh, Berserk was able to execute this duality so well. This duality exists in the minds of every Negro on this continent. And many of them end up embracing the dark side. Because the hopelessness of the situation they're in is just too much. Because the dark side says, hey... I know you're going down, you know you're going down, but you don't have to go down alone. You don't have to suffer all the way down to the abyss. We can get a few things before we go down there, and that's just how it is. That's honestly how it is. The struggle between maintaining your sanity, right, or embracing uh, and, and embracing the, the dark side, it's, it's a fight of its own. Like, seriously, guys, it's a fight of its own. And again, this is not a complaint. This is education for those who wish to know and understand the world better and how everybody else uh, lives across the world, right? For those who just want to consume things and never think about it, this is not for you. You're part of the problem. And best believe, you're a sacrifice, uh, whether you know it or not. So... This duality here exists amongst all people, but most people here in Africa the most because you have a hostile environment, um, you have a lot of noise pollution, you don't know what peace and quiet feels like, and so when you are in a quiet environment, you scream. I know you all have seen these niggas who like making a noise all the time, right? I know some of y'all have always wondered, man, why, why some black people always screaming, man? I don't get it. It's because they've never been in an environment that's quiet. And then they, being in a quiet environment, they get, well, they get twitchy. And then they have to talk loud. They have to create this noise because it's all they ever know. And of course, 
it's going to require uh, self-awareness in order for somebody to realize what the heck they're doing and why they're doing it. So now going back to me, is that, okay, so you're telling us that your insanity is because you're fighting this duality. You, you're, you, you're experiencing this duality between maintaining your sanity and uh, fighting off insanity, but constantly doing that is hindering your uh, consistency in dishing out videos, your consistency in dishing out content, in drawing, your consistency in even being emotionally uh, stable. Is this what you're telling us? And I'm saying, yes. Yes. I cannot be consistent because of the constant problem here of fighting off the dark side. I will never embrace the dark side, but it's always there saying, hey man, hey man, I know you don't like these niggas. You can take a few of them down with you, but I know I'm not going down. You see, I know I'm not going down. So how do you know? Well, again, I believe, right? I believe in the God of the Bible. So I, I did what he said, repent and all that, right? Be given the spirit. Then you get a new heart and whatnot. And so with that, it's like, okay, I, I, I have assurance that I'm not going down, but the struggle, the fights, the hostility of this world and this environment in particular still weighs down on me. And so there is no Humpty Dumpty and Kumbaya situation when you become a Christian that doesn't exist. Life gets a bit harder because now you want to talk more. You want to tell people what's up. Hey man, I think you shouldn't do that because it's going to lead to one, two, and three and then we're all going to end up dead Niggas don't want to listen. Niggas don't want to be your friends no more. And the next thing you know, you're a loner. But even if that was not the case, even if I did not believe in the Bible and stuff like that, ultimately, I would still be stuck here. And the truth is in the pudding that most Africans end up embracing the dark side because no one shows them. They don't know what the light is or what the light could offer. There is only darkness in this place. And when there's only darkness, imagine trying to draw a manga in the dark. Can you do that? You can't. If you're going to rely on sunlight to do that, but then you know during the day the things that you have to do, chores that you got to do, you are not going to have much time and energy to focus on what you truly want to do. You're not going to have time to uh, develop or reach your potential at all, right? Because when it's nighttime, it's literally dark. There's no electricity most of the time, right? And that gets to your psyche too because there's no control over the environment, so on and so on. But anyway, the, morals, the moral of uh, Berserk here is that the human spirit pushes on the human spirit, the human will is to fight, 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 struggle against fate, yada, yada, yada. Well, in reality, people don't. They try and they always end up dead. That's, that's the reality. Berserk is to inspire us to fight off the dark side, you see. Uh, but it is just, it is just a, a comic book at the end of the day. And because we can relate to it, it does give us a bit of comfort. But in reality, people don't have a magic fairy that is going to sprinkle dust on their face so they can get healed from their wounds. In reality, people don't even have many friends or any friends at all. And so a lot of things that Berserk needs to use for the story to continue, in reality, those things cannot happen because a lot of things in berserk it's for the sake of the plot it just it just it's for the sake of the plot right and you don't mind because it's like yeah it's a comic book i get it so in reality however things are a lot tougher things are a lot tougher and now i have i fully understand my plight now that okay man so it's not because you're lazy it's not because you just want to complain. There is a real psychological influence 
on you that is affecting you that leads to a physical ailment as well. And I'm studying psychology now and I can tell you that a lot of um, environmental issues, I'm not talking about climate change, I'm just talking as the habitat of the human being, wherever he is, it does affect, it does have a strong play on their psychology and how they uh, express themselves as an individual. And many times people here in Africa cannot even reach the point where they can express themselves as an individual because the moment they try to, they are looked down upon or called a crazy nigga or a nigga who wants to be better than them or a nigga who sounds white, blah, 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 you see. So you can never develop individuality in a hostile environment that only wants you to be part of the collective, to only serve the, the evil of the environment itself, that nobody is allowed to change the circumstance of this hellhole. Whoever tries to do so will end up dead and you'll be shot, not by the white man, but by your own brother. So it's just so interesting, man. Like I, I really, really, really enjoy Berserk, guys. Uh, because I can relate to it so much. And uh, at an artistic point of view, it's also pure genius. Like the art style, I dig it. The new one with the guys drawing it now, well, you know, it's, you know, it's, not, it's not what it was, but oh well. But point is, I enjoy Berserk. I'm glad it exists. It is a true masterpiece that explores many, many themes and it does so uh, coherently and perfectly and it just helped me reassess my situation uh, reassess the environment I'm in and even though it's like hey bro you had the internet and all this blah 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 yeah the moment somebody who says things like that the moment you ask them have you tried to do what I'm doing the answer is usually no have you drawn 10 pages of anything? No. Then shut the F up, right? Uh, let's quickly listen to this part here. I mentioned before how Guts is a deeply existential character, which isn't surprising as the manga of Berserk was definitely inspired by the philosophical works of Nietzsche. At points in the manga, Miura even verbatim quotes the man, and these philosophical tenets and the themes of the manga really work in enriching Guts' character. Whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process, he does not become a monster. The existential, I can't say that word, existentialism, yeah, that word, it's very, very, um, it's all over Africa. It's just people don't know that word exists, or some do, of course, but it's just something that is at the back of their mind all the time, you know, where it's like, why am I here? For what purpose? Is it really just for suffering? And then people try to change the circumstance and in doing so they end up becoming a villain. Many people grow up trying to be a hero, really. And they are always shocked how quickly people turn on them to label them as the villain. When the villain has been terrorizing the community for eons, right? Okay. For a couple of years and then you rise and the people say yeah you're you're our fighter you're going to represent us it only takes the main villain the main dictator to just literally deliver kfc boxes to them niggas' houses and watch the following day those people whom you are trying to represent will call you the villain and that could end in two different ways or multiple different ways a you can kill yourself and like oh how could this happen b you can join the dark side and be like screw these people or c you can say screw all these people i'm out i'm going to the golden city that's if you can even get there right and so unfortunately a lot of people here do end up becoming monsters a lot of progress here is hindered and deliberately sabotaged because just like the kingdom of Swaziland, 
Hey man, the king owns everything. He owns everything there. You're not allowed to have a small business per se, right? Why? Because now you're a direct threat to him. You can't have a, a, a franchise there because you're a di direct threat to him. You now have autonomy. You have independency. You can now express yourself as an individual. And that is a threat to dictators in this hellhole we call Africa. And when that is the, the case, it is hard for children to be able to develop any skill that can help them build. And even if they do develop any skill that helps them build, whatever they build, it will be burnt down. Burnt down because you are a threat. Now you're giving hope to other people that they can be free, that they don't need to vote for the satanic retarded uh, uh, fake government, that they can just do things on their own. And this is the problem. And now that people like me are an anomaly here, right? I am an anomaly. A lot of people are like, hey, man, I, I can't believe you're doing all this. Uh, but, you know, screw you. Why? Why is he saying that? Because he's been brainwashed. All he's ever known was the darkness. And now he has either embraced it or has become numb to it and that he's just going to lick the floor and die. But... He's going to sip some alcohol while he does it as well. So, again, the environment of this place is so hostile to your creativity. It's, it's deadly to your creativity. When I was younger, things were better. Things were better because infrastructure was better. The savages had not destroyed everything yet, but now they have. And with a lack of consistent functioning infrastructure, you're always on survival mode and you cannot be creative if adrenaline is constantly pumping through your veins. Like you guys have no idea what it's like to constantly have adrenaline pumping, to constantly clench your fists all the time. And some might say, nigga, you got a gland issue. It's like, nah, bro. I have no gland issue. It's just where I live. You're going to have to keep that fist clen uh, uh, clenched so you can knock a nigga out before he knocks you out. And that's just how it is. And it's like, my goodness, that sucks, bro. Yeah, I know, right? But anyway, um, Berserk is awesome. I honestly uh, recommend that you guys read it. You can just get a summary here on YouTube, you know. Just go to the Almighty Lolly, check his stuff out. Um, and for those who hate thinking, I don't blame you, bro. What's there to think about? Especially if you're born here, what's there to think about? You know it's over. It has been determined that you're screwed. You're going to lick the floor and die, right? The only free will you can ex exercise is, um, well, yeah, you're definitely going to lick the floor. There's nothing you can do about that. But uh, are you going to lick the floor and kill people or lick the floor and try to help people? You know what I mean? Uh, you, you're going to lick the floor, but... Are you going to try to help? Because I'm trying to help. I'm licking that floor, but I'm helping on the side. I'm not, I'm not trying to kill nobody. So that's just the reality. And uh, does it bring peace to me? Um, I don't know. Would you be at peace licking the floor, bro? Like, seriously? Yeah, no. So <sighs> it all makes sense now. Why my mood is always messed up. Why I am up and down and yada yada it was not only the trauma of back then but it is now the trauma of the co the constant the constant licking the floor and it's like fine i'll lick the floor and i'm trying to find a way where i can be more productive while i do it but again that's me being hopeful because in reality how the hell can you lick the floor and then Expect yourself to have the energy and creativity to sit and draw, pencil, ink, edit, toning, dialogue, you name it. How do you do that? Yeah, it's not easy, but whatever. Until next time.